Ryan Yarborough of the Los Angeles Dodgers just hanging out, watching some playoff baseball, getting ready for their turn. Ryan, good to see you, and I like the smile on your face. This must be pretty nice, good little time period in life to be getting ready for a monster playoff matchup, right? Yeah, first off, thanks for having me, guys. And, you know, it's a, it's exciting stuff. You know, I've never had this much downtime leading into a playoffs before. Normally you're right in the thick of it right away, so it's uh, – it's definitely been weird being able to watch playoff baseball a little bit before you get going. Yarborough, what's up, baby? Uh, do you did you guys care who you faced? Um, like divisions, you guys. I mean, you haven't been over with the Dodgers for too too long, but they've handled the Diamondbacks historically. They've handled the Brewers historically. So, did it really matter to the guys who you faced, or you just wanted to get the game? You want to get Saturday here fat quicker than possible? Yeah, AJ. Hey, AJ. No, I don't think it really mattered to us one way or the other. Um, at least not, not anybody I've talked to. I, I think it was more about just kind of like figuring out who we were playing. I don't think there was anything like, hey, I think we'll match up here better here. I think we have a lot of confidence in our team and where we're at. It's just a matter of kind of being able to stack it up, who we're, who we're playing against, kind of be able to get the matchups and everything that way ready. So I think right now it's just a matter of now we know who we're playing so we can kind of just get, uh, get ready for it. But I don't think there was anything like this would be better than the other, you know. Did they talk to you about what your role is going to be in this series? How are you going to be used? Oh, come on, Kratz. You know, I'm, I'm probably – I'm super flexible. I don't think there's anything like – Come on, don't do that. Done too much of, so, uh, no, I think, you know, I've, I've done a little bit of everything since I've come over here and pretty much in my career. So, I think for now it's just going to uh, hopefully continue to do that. I don't think there's going to be a, a set role. Um, so, I'll just be ready for anything. But, you know, that's kind of what I'm used to. <laughs> Congrats, you shaking your head. Hey, come on. Garbo is like Mr. Do-It-All. Yeah, it always it seems to fire him up a little bit. No. You, I, they, I know they've talked to you, and they're like, you're probably going game one, starter. We're going to leave you out there for seven innings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for me over Kershaw, I don't think anybody in their right mind would ever do that. Kershaw <laughs> can come and close it out for you. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, he's, he's so used to doing that. <laughs> say, your, say your presence, announce your presence with authority, all right? Yeah, well, there's a difference between being, uh, announcing your presence with authority and just being straight up crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want to announce who the uh, winner in your mind of NL MVP should be now that we got through the regular season numbers and what we saw on the field and you're going to have some bias and that's okay, you're allowed. Yeah, it was, some of the stuff I've seen, you know, Mookie and Freddie do this year is incredible. Um Especially, I think, with Mookie being able to do it all between playing, you know, gold glove outfielder and all of a sudden, like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm good at second base, too. Like, I know you talked about it over the years and doing it, but just seeing how, like, how much you can do it at a high level, uh, it's been incredible. And then, you know, Freddie almost 60 doubles, which is just another planet to me, you know. Like, I think, did he get the most? I think he did get the most in Dodgers history with how historic and this franchise has been and how many great players have played here. That's just mind-boggling to me, you know. Um, but I mean, Acuna has been doing something otherworldly too. You know, what did he 40, 70? Has that ever happened before? What is it like? <laughs> I mean, I, it's, it's hard and he hit like three thirty something. So, um, they're all really deserving. I don't, I'm glad I don't have to vote on it. Cause like, that's, it's just been some incredible years this year, but I mean, that's, those are some crazy stats. Wait, you do have to vote on it. Player's choice. Yep. Oh, Cause we're, 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 we're going to have a little player <laughs> choice action. What? I might have been on paternity for that, boys. I don't know. I don't remember signing anything like that. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. What, what is it? What is it that they do in politics? Like not present or something like that? In absentia. <laughs> I think I did electronically, you know. We'll, we'll figure it out. No <laughs> chance they did electronically. It's still the most – it's because they still hired Jonesy. They can't pay for an electronic, <laughs> an electronic <laughs> voting system. It's still done. They're like, oh, yeah, here's your piece of paper. Uh – Fill out who you, and the whole paper's like, who do you think is the best? They don't give you a list or anything. They're just like, you write it in. I wrote nice you box in this of year. Pens just sitting right there in the middle of the clubhouse, too. Just yep, box of big pens. Yep. Man. Hey, brother. <laughs> want to know, you played with Mookie, played against Mookie for some years, both in, you know, obviously in the East. I played against you, too. What, now that you're his teammate, that what's interesting, what's like, what's, unique about him that you didn't know obviously from afar we see what we see the guy's unbelievable but now you get to see the preparation and how it makes him unbelievable what really makes him unbelievable for the people that don't know 
yeah, I think it really just comes down to, to work ethic and everything he's doing. You know, I don't think he just, I mean, he's been doing it at such a high level and the, uh, how much dedication and everything he puts on a daily basis is just still unbelievable. He's never satisfied. It, it is crazy because obviously they go out there early, you know, before BP and they're doing ground balls and they're doing all this infield work. And I mean, he's basically having to do double the work because he's doing infield and outfield stuff every single day. And then he's able to do what he's able to do on the field. So um, just how much he takes care of himself. Like, like I said, the work ethic, it's, I've just never seen anything like it before. Um, and, you know, like it was like one of those things where you kind of say, all right, he can kind of hold his own maybe over there a little bit. You know, he's going to be really good because he did. I think that's what he did, like coming up through the minors or um, or at least kind of growing up. And then you kind of see how good of an athlete he is and how good of a second baseman he is, like the amazing play he's, he's done. So um, I'm not going to put anything past him. He could probably do anything he wants to athletically. You've kind of seen videos and doing other sports, which is just unreal in itself. But. Yeah, it's just I'm glad I don't have to face them anymore. If that makes it easier, question for you. Who partied the hardest when you guys clinched the clinched the National League West? Man, I don't. There was definitely a, a couple guys who uh, I don't think we. I don't think it went too crazy. I know some guys went out after, but like especially because we had a day game the next day. Um, Man, I, I guess I guess I don't know who but I'm. <laughs> I ended up probably being the most of the guys who knew that they had the day off the next day. <laughs> uh -huh. um, most of those guys, I think, were uh, some of the veteran guys knew that they had the day off, so they definitely went out and celebrated a little bit. So you know, um, I'm sure it was a bunch of like Mookie, Freddie, like uh, Miggy, all those guys. You know, um, who've been able to do this for a long time. They they went out. I think they probably knew that having the day off the next day that they had a, a good time. So. Um, but, but I think everyone had a great time, but it was just a matter of who actually seemed to have a day off to really uh, to go out and enjoy it. Did it feel like a different kind of celebration? You've been through celebrations with the Rays. I mean, you guys got you guys got within the brink of winning the whole thing. Did it feel like a different kind of celebration being the fact that they've won 10, 11 straight? Uh, I, sort of. I think for the fact of um, – this isn't like this is just kind of like the stepping stone here you know what i mean like winning the west is like kind of what you do it's like part of it but we have bigger aspirations bigger dreams so you know um it was like we're gonna enjoy this because this isn't something that just comes easy but at the same time like we're on to bigger better things we want to continue to have these celebrations and at the end of the day hold the trophy and be world series champion so um kind of like that that mixture of that you know we're gonna enjoy it but at the same time like we still got a, a goal to accomplish. So um, that was pretty cool to be a part of like, yeah, we're going to enjoy this. But like at the same time, like this isn't, this isn't the end all be all goal. Like we still got better things to do. So size up the Diamondbacks for me. I mean, this is a division rival. Did you watch those games? Are you that kind of guy? Or like, let me just get a good look at the most recent version of this team and how they're playing their playoff baseball, because we know that they're known for, running around the bases and wreaking havoc. And they didn't even do a ton of that. They actually had some good pop in that series that we pointed out. But your thoughts on how they handled that series, which also included Brandon Fott going up against Corbin Burns game one. I think the whole world was shocked that the Brewers were down 1-0, and then they blink, and that series is over. Yeah, you know, I think what's um, – I mean, I, we've played them twice since I got traded over in the last two months. And I think, um, you know, they're they're a really good team, super athletic fast uh, good defensively have some really good pitching and you know they, they like you said they had some they have some good thump but I think it's more about like speed and um doing things on the bases like not saying they don't have guys who can leave the ballpark at any point of the game but um I think that's we yeah we had we had it on the clubhouse I think we had every single game on, on the clubhouse you know there's so many TVs that just uh at some point if you look in one direction you're going to see some game so um we were definitely paying close attention but we're not trying to like harp on it too much but um, look, they're going to be, they're going to be a good, they're going to be a good team. They're kind of, I don't want to say scrappy, but they're going to like continue to put up really tough at bats, um, not give you anything, you know, uh, really good contact oriented team. So, um, just really make your pitches. But I think that's kind of does well for us because we're a really good defensive team and, uh, with pitchers who trust guys behind you, that's all you can really ask for. Just put it in play and know the guys behind you are going to make plays. Do you know or not how how if you're on the roster or have it told you yet? No, I don't. I don't. We haven't had any conversations yet of um, 
as far as I know of with anybody, I mean, obviously they're going to be the, the pretty uh, guys who are going to be on locks to make the team regardless. But uh, I'm sure half of that was probably to make sure who we're playing kind of break it down that way. But uh, no, we haven't seemed to have those conversations. I'm sure it's going to happen overall over the next couple of days. How does that feel? I know how it felt for me being you're not you're you're in a different role than I was, but it's like, are they going to carry a third guy? There's, t- you know, third catcher. How do those conversations happen? Are you pulled into the manager's office or does Doc just come by and go, yo, you're going to be on the roster? You know, because I remember getting pulled to the front of the plane and sitting down next to the manager on our flight to the next series. Oh, wow. That's pretty late. Um no, I think for I mean I've 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 been both ways. You know, I've been very fortunate um at the beginning of my career and being able to write on the roster and you kind of um I'm trying to remember correctly, I don't think there was really much meetings. Maybe it was kinda of like they pull you aside, like, hey, you're gonna this is kind of what you're th- we're thinking for you, so you're good to go. And then um I've also been on the other side where it's unfortunate where it it sucks where you wanna be out there and uh in twenty one I was told in the the DS they're like, Hey, like they pull you into the office and they're like, Hey man, we're we're thinking we're going to go this way. It's just a matchup thing, but be ready for the next series because you're going to be in that with the longer series. Um, so I, th- I think it's just kind of depending. I'm assuming it would be based off of what your situation is and kind of go from there. But, uh, yeah, it, it's just you always just want to be out there to compete. And, you know, you've been doing this for um, six months. You know, for my, for my case, it's only been a couple months since being traded over. But you want to just go out there and compete with your guys and, you know, compete at the highest level. You, I mean, these are the games you live for and you want to play in. So especially with these atmospheres that you're kind of seeing on TV right now. So um, uh, you always want to be a part of that. Are you ready for that atmosphere? Because Dodger Stadium is like no other. You've seen what Philly – Philly is lit. Dodger Stadium is going to be lit. Are you ready for that atmosphere? Um, I'm super excited for it. You know, uh, especially like you said, seeing how Philadelphia was crazy. Like their fans were going nuts. You want to talk about home field advantage, like – that's everything you want. So uh, I'm super excited to see that here at Dodger Stadium. I mean, we draw really well regardless in a regular season game. So, it, I mean, just to kind of see them on a postseason game when it's on a completely different level is going to be absolutely insane. And um, I was actually talking to uh, – once we found out um, that we were going to play, play the Diamondbacks, I actually was, like, standing right next to uh, Will Smith. I'm like, all right, like, you played at the Diamondback Stadium during the World Baseball Classic. Like, how was that place – when it's like sold out and rock and he's like, it's, it's unbelievable. So like to be able to do that on two different places in a little hostile environment there with, uh, with Arizona, like that's the stuff you look forward to, man. I, like, it gets it's you not going to be hostile. It's not going to be hostile in Arizona because y'all fans going to travel to Arizona. So you get the shit to play. Home. <laughs> Dude, we travel everywhere, man. Like it is unbelievable. Like I, I came from being with Tampa, like, and you like see like the handful of people coming around and everything. And like, there's giant sections like you'll be in like you'll just look over and someone hit a double and you'll see like Freddie doing the double dance at second base and you'll look behind him and the whole like section of the outfield is like doing like the hand thing. You're like, holy like where are these like it'd be incredible like we are in Boston and we're like people made the cross country trek. I'm like, this is incredible how great our fans are, how they travel like everywhere. And so like, yeah, like you said, it's going to be a super quick. I think it's like probably under an hour, or, like a five minute drive from L.A. So it's going to be crazy the amount of fan support we're going to have on the road too. You talk to any of these rookies, because you guys are going to be leaning on some, some rookies, some young, young pitchers starting. Do you talk to them at all? Or are you like, eh, they'll figure it out. (laughs) You know, you, uh, you help them when you can. Like, obviously like they're all super phenomenal talents. I think I'm, I'm so used to having that happen just because my time with Tampa and how much they leaned on young guys, uh, me being, part of that at one point um and as long as you have uh talent and you have really good stuff at least from the pitching side like you're going to succeed it's just a matter of getting comfortable and getting um uh locked in in that that regard so you know like guys will have questions and stuff like that like they have me who's been around a little bit we have so many vets who have been doing this for a long time especially like in the postseason um so I think there's they'll have a lot of guys to turn to from the under the pitching staff, you know, because like Kershaw, Lance Lynn's done it for a long time, had a lot of playoff success. Um, and you got like Brazier out of the pen, who's pitching the Red Sox in big postseason games. Like most of the guys here have really done it. Just these young guys. There's a couple of young guys who maybe 
getting their first taste in the fr- this first year. So uh, luckily we have a lot of guys they can lean on to kind of get get through it and kind of get an idea of what to expect. Hey, you said a double dance. Maybe I missed it. Maybe I don't get my Dodgers newsletter. What is it? What does it stand for? You got to tell me what it stands for. No, it's literally the there. They, we literally found a song. But some like Dodger fan made a rap video about this thing, um, and it's it's gone literally viral. I, I mean, it started with the uh, it's, it's the Freddie dance, so it's literally him like dancing. It started, I think, I, they had like a, a a Met Gala or something early in the year before I came, like a charity fundraiser, and um, he was just having a, a good a good a uh, good time, and I think he was just dancing, and someone caught it, and so like that somehow became the the doubles. Like when you hit a double or a triple, that's what you do at second base, and. Um, you know, some people are better at it than others. Some people get the hips involved. I'm sure you can imagine who and who can't. Um, but you know, it's a, it's just something that's been viral. There you go. Uh, there, perfect right there. You got some guys who really get, then Kike of course can, uh, really emphasize it a little bit more than anybody. He else, makes it but, sexy. You know. Kike makes it <laughs> sexy. Uh, so he, uh, a lot of guys have a lot of fun with it and, uh, like you'll see it's, you'll, they like pan to the crowd and the whole, if, especially for at home, literally the whole stadium will be doing it. It's, it's incredible. You know, the amount of um, interaction that's become with it and like how like everyone's been involved with it. So I'm, I'm excited to kind of see that when it happens during playoffs. I mean, yeah, we know Kratz. That was a key addition. Kike, they looked at what they were doing. They were like, we need to bring Kike back for this. This is the year of <laughs> doubles dance. This dude's going to make this thing famous for all of the postseason to see, too. We know it. He's going to shine there. So let me ask you, because one team, and you're from the area, that's now done already in your former ball club, the Rays. So two parts of the equation here. One, were you surprised to see the results there? Like, they just had a bad series, bad couple games. They're done after starting off. 13 and 0 and two were you like what the fuck where is everyone <sighs> yeah I, th- I think on on both but i was honestly shocked with the whole fan uh the lack thereof the fan attendance and everything you know um especially because i've seen that place rocking you know over the years with the playoff series and um everyone super into the games and like being involved in like like i was saying earlier like being at home in playoffs is a, is a huge advantage. Like you definitely get that home field advantage. So um, that was kind of tough to see. I was, I was honestly shocked. I was, I remember returning on the games like, all right, I want to see this place rocking for the first, like first time. Cause normally that's when they open up the third deck and they kind of really get that place going. And it was, it was honestly shocking a little bit. I was not expecting that to happen. So I don't, I really have no idea what happened or um, what they're saying was the big reason. Uh but, you know, I definitely thought more people would have come out for the games. And, um, yeah, I think it was it's just tough. You know, the, the, the crazy stat that, that really threw me off was the – what was it? They scored the first run in, like, 30-something innings in, in playoffs, uh, almost tied, like, the an old an old Dodgers record or something. So, um, you know, with, with the, what kind of offense they had all year and the kind of the players that were doing so well, you thought they were going to um, really kind of – uh, hit the gas and like go into the series that way. And it just kind of just didn't seem to go their way. So, um, uh, you know, not really the way they wanted to exit. I haven't really reached out to anybody too yet. I didn't want to like do it when the, the wound was so fresh. I wanted to wait a couple of days before reaching out to guys and see how, <laughs> how everything happened. What about friends or just people in the area that, you know, of course, being from there, like, did you get any good excuses? People either saying like, yo, where is everyone? Or it's a bad look for us and for baseball or, you know, the classic, Hey, it's a midweek. We just got the time down, but I mean, everybody knows the situation. Like we knew that they were going to be playing yeah. and probably playing on the earlier side. I actually thought there was a chance they could have played even earlier. So I get it. People have jobs like not putting that out there, but you know, the whole situation too, with the new ballpark that's supposed to be coming in is going to be in the same exact spot. And you always get this big debate going now. And Pierzynski's on the show too, going, Got to have it on the other side. That's where there's more people and more people coming from outside of Tampa that now feel like they have to, you know, get through two levels to get to where they want to go, and they just won't do it. Yeah, I, th- I know. I think I saw that, and, it, and I think really half of it is is that going over that bridge can be pretty like it can get backed up like crazy. I remember um, a couple of years ago. I think it might have been in 2019. Uh, we were playing the Astros and the DS and literally we, I remember my wife and I, we waited like an hour and a half 
post game, like, all right, we're gonna like let the let the crowds like get out, like so we don't have to like sit there in traffic like crazy. And we still like it was like bumper to bumper, like because we lived in Tampa at that point. It was still like bumper to bumper just to like get home, like an hour and a half after the game ended, even like leaving the stadium. So um, I, I think it's just a lot of like logistic problems getting over there for whatever reason. Um, I definitely understand the the whole point of like literally getting the other side of the bridge because then you can get especially where I'm from in Lakeland, it's like a 45 minute drive. Like it's a people from Orlando would think about making the commute. Cause it'd be like an hour, hour and a half drive from Orlando at some parts. So, and then adding like an extra 45, 50 minutes um, just to get over that bridge into the St. Pete side, which is a nice area. It's come a long way since, especially since I grew up there. Um, it's just different, you know? So I think you see, like I think it was probably pointed out, like you see how well the the lightning and the and the the bucks draw. So um, I think everyone just wanted to kind of see what would that would be. But I mean, it still could happen over there in St. Pete's side with the new stadium. But um, you just never know with these things and what could have been if you put it on on the on the Tampa side. How's the uh, how's the new baby life going? It's good from a it's good it's good from afar. I haven't really been able to. I I basically have FaceTime at this point. It's um. It's definitely weird, you know, with, with I'm learning for the first time because we, like I said, we lived in Tampa and we're from there. So, like, I was able to be home year round for it and uh, be able to help out. So, basically, when you get your your three days, your three official days and you're like, all right, babe, I'm, I want to stay, like, really bad. But I got to go to the cross the whole other side of the country here. So, um, that part's kind of tough, especially with just wanting to be there to help her out, especially with a second one and uh, with a two-year-old who's a handful herself. So, um, you know, I'm excited. They're actually heading out. They're going to fly out here in like a couple hours. So excited. They're going to be out here for playoffs and have them here for that. So, uh, but it's, it's just been strange to kind of be present from afar and um, just kind of see all the things that your, uh, your little ones are doing. So I'm just happy they're going to be coming out. Yeah. Your firstborn thinks you're an app. She's going to like when she's annoyed with you in real life, she's just going to swipe, swipe left and just try to just dad, get out of there. It, she knows how, like, you know, on the FaceTime, like she knows where the, the red end button, the is, red button, like she knows where that thing is. So like if she's done talking, to me, she's like, all right, cool. Like, let's just I got I got I got Disney movies to watch, dad. So like, let's hurry this up. <laughs> yeah. And from and from one baby to another. OK, you have a baby at home. Can you confirm that the game two starter is going to be another baby, Bobby Miller? <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm assuming it would be. I don't, I don't like. I legitimately have no idea. But I mean, that's in my mind. I would, I would see that's who's going to be starting. But could you open for him? At least I don't know. Like, I don't sit. And you, I didn't, you want me to go t- uh, talk to Dave today? Go talk to Doc and, and shoot you a text. Go for it. I'll, I'll wait. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, last one for me on that front, though. Suddenly, the starting staff takes a lot of hits, right? We thought Bueller's coming back. Arias obviously is not pitching for the rest of this season, at least. Um, injuries earlier in the year with May and Gonsolin. So you add all of that up, and no matter what, you got to look around and go, all right, there's some really good young arms. Bobby's one of them, Emmett, right, some others. Um what do you think that's going to be like for them where it's not just, Hey, we're going to ease you in. You might have some big innings here or you might start game three or whatever. It's like, nah, you, you dudes are getting thrown right into the fire and we win our world series. Probably if you guys are like, you know, big time talents right from the jump, like, you know, most of them are going to be, but they have to do it right now. Yeah. I think that's going to be, it's going to be huge. And I think what, what's really encouraging is the fact that leading up to this postseason, they all have been throwing incredible. Well, Bobby's been doing it like all year. Uh, Sheehan, his last outing struck out 10 in Colorado, like and threw really well. And then Pepio has been thrown extremely well since he has come back. So um, I think he had some injuries early in the year, Um, but so they're, they're really throwing really well when it matters. Um, And it just gives them a lot of confidence going into this postseason of, Hey, like, I know my stuff can play, I think, and they're going to be super um, confident going into this postseason of just going out there and competing. And I think they do a really good job from um, the pitching standpoint and the coaching staff of really just putting guys in good situations. And I think the the biggest thing is, especially when you're a starting pitcher, like a guy who's going to cover a lot of length, 
um, knowing that you're going to have good guys. God forbid you get into a, a, a bind or a situation where we have a ton of different guys in our bullpen who can get you out of, out of jams and pick you up. So I think knowing that you have that behind you um, as a young guy is just is humongous. And so we literally have like three, at least – guys that three or four guys I can think of right off the top of my top of my brain that I can come in and just really get you out of a pinch. So um, plus you add that to our really good defense guys who can play plug and play in different um, different positions and do it all really well. I think it adds up to a lot of recipe for success for younger guys. We want you to be super because you're you're an FT guy. You're one of the OG FT guys. We want you to be super confident when you go into the series. Earlier Jonesy said he faced you. Uh, so just we already saw what happened when I faced you. We showed the video last time on here. It was just rockets. Jonesy, you didn't see it, but Jonesy's two for five off you. He's hitting 400 in his career. So just know, hey, we're not on the other team, okay? It's okay. We're not on the Diamondbacks. Me and Jonesy are done playing. So you have such a great opportunity to do really well this series. That may man. That that means a lot, you know. Your your rocket singles are are still hung double in my ground rule double. Uh, I, th I think were they using juice balls or something in the in the <laughs> I don't know. Trip, but, you know? Triple A Bobo balls, triple A <laughs> squishy balls, the free giveaway <laughs> ones that you get in cereal boxes. Oh, okay. So you know, we're you can see it, it still lives in my brain, pretty like rent free. So you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> really remember everything to the detail. So. Just be like, shoo, get out of here. I got a playoff series to get ready for. Get out of here. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Arms, good luck, man. We'll be watching. We'll be following. Hopefully talk to you, like, next round when you guys keep trucking through, all right? Go get them. All right. Appreciate it, guys. Thank That's you, Ryan Yarbrough of the Los Angeles Dodgers.